I will hit scan for Bluetooth devices and now we can see every device that has been found. Hey guys, it's Rob again with another .NET video. In this video, we are going to create some sort of Bluetooth listing application or searching for Bluetooth devices. Keep in mind that you can always refer to my homepage. There you will find free material, more explanation and like example downloads. For this video, you can go to downloads and then you will find a Windows Forms example as well as a WPF example. And don't be afraid in case of your uh, DB.NET developer, just go to the top and when you are like finding some sort of code, I usually provide the DB.NET example as well. Just let me scroll a bit like here. I mean, this case here is a bit easy, but there will be other cases where it's more difficult like here. And I'm always trying to provide the VB.NET example as well. One last thing before we get started. If you like my content and if it provides like any value to you, please leave a like and a subscribe. Thank you. So in the first step, let's create a simple UI for our application. In this case, I will some sort of display like two different styles of showing you the listed devices. The one case is a more individual way like displaying a custom control and the other way is like just displaying a simple string list in a list box. Create this LB Bluetooth devices list box which I just named like that and in the next step create the flow layout panel called FLP Bluetooth devices. Then for sure you will also need a button like this one over here, put a nice text in it and call it BTN scan for devices. Keep in mind that I used the border style fixed single for this flow layout panel to actually display a little bit more before we start searching for devices otherwise you wouldn't see it. Now we will get into the more crucial part. For this open extras over here Click new get packet manager and I know it's in German but it should be a problem if you are familiar with Visual Studio. So click new get packet manager and then manage new get packages for your project. Then this window will appear and here is already the library which we are going to use. For sure in my case it's already installed so you first gotta search for it. Let's do this now. I'm just clicking search and then I will say 32 feet and press enter. Then we will already see the correct library which we can see over here. Maybe nowadays there is some sort of different library available as we are already getting this kind of deprecation notification over here but I didn't see any problems with that so far so I would just stay with that. So go ahead install this version of the library which has like 215k downloads and yeah you're ready to go. Finally we can start coding. So double click on scan for Bluetooth devices and hop right into the code. The next step kind of depends on your infrastructure or if you like using MVVM etc. In this case it's just simple plain old Windows Forms with just a little example. So I will keep it like this for now. At first you can spot this property over here which is like displaying or notifying hey I'm already searching for devices so please don't press this button again and wait till I'm ready again. For this we create created a backing field called is searching for devices with an underscore as usual and in the next step we created a simple getter which will return that value. Then we created some sort of value propagation we just set the value behind is searching for devices and then we started toggling the button. That means if the value gets set like to true that means is searching for devices equals true then the button will automatically switch its state to disabled and if we are saying like is searching for devices is not true anymore which means false then the button will be enabled again. For sure this process needs to be done on the UI thread or you will get some sort of error. Somewhere above you can see the list of type Bluetooth device info which we are going to talk about in a second and a backing field called Bluetooth devices also with an underscore. So this is basically where we are storing our found devices. To be able to use this list we are going to instantiate it inside of the form1 constructor. After that we are already setting the LB Bluetooth devices display member to device name which will help us in a few seconds and tells the list box hmm what do I need to display I'm bound to some sort of Bluetooth device info but what should I display inside of me after that we can like start the final implementation of searching for Bluetooth devices. The first thing we need to do is set 
the boolean flag to true to signal the UI, hey, I'm busy right now, please don't click me again. And it doesn't really matter what happens then. Finally, we are saying, hey, I'm not busy anymore. I don't care if there was any error or something like that. In any case, we're saying, hey, I'm done searching for devices, so please turn the button on again. Inside the marked section over here, we are clearing some previous search results. On the one hand, it's the data itself, and on the other hand, it's the display inside of our UI, which consists of a flow layout panel and a list box. In the section I've marked now, we can do the actual search process itself. We will cover this in a few seconds, but let's just recap what we've done over here. First, I'm declaring some sort of array. I mean, I can just omit it over here and take it like there. This doesn't make a much difference over here because I'm not using the array outside of the try itself. But well, this is another topic. The most important thing over here is this little search function, which we're going to cover in a few seconds. And after this whole search process has completed, asynchronous so our UI doesn't get blocked, we are adding the final results to our Bluetooth devices list which we have declared over here. After everything worked below the try catch, we can now check, hey, did I find some Bluetooth devices or didn't I? If, just display them. These functions will get covered in a few seconds as well. First, let's take a look at the search function itself. Hopping into the function by pressing F12, we can now see what actually happens. To start searching for devices, we need to create a thing called Bluetooth client, or at least the class is called like this. This class is coming from the 32 feet library we've just installed. To use it, keep in mind, you need to do the import, which I've done over here in the hand net sockets. After we have created that client, we can use it to actually scan for the devices. Keep in mind that this function accepts some sort of filtering parameters, which you can use to improve the speed or at least affect the speed of the searching process itself. As this function, discover devices, may take some time, we will outsource the functionality or the execution with task.run. If we wouldn't use it, you will see your UI freezing and you mostly want to avoid it. After we are done searching for devices, we will close the client again. Maybe it could be better to keep some instance open or to not close it every time. But so far, I didn't get much experience from trying different things over here. So I'll just leave it like this for now. Feel free to tell me your experiences in the comments. Like, hey Rob, I kept the client open. I didn't close it every time. It was a better performance. Anything like that, feel free. At the end of this function, we are returning the found devices. After we found our devices, or maybe we didn't, in the case we found some clients, we are now going to display them. The easiest way would be for sure displaying it in a list box. The display list box items function looks like this. It's basically just almost one line. I mean, if a previous thing is inside of there, we could also say like data source is null before it, or sometimes it won't get reset. In this case, everything should be done and the list box should display its items. The display FLP items is some sort of more complicated, but we will see this now. The display FLP items will basically do the following. It iterates over each Bluetooth device and creates a custom Bluetooth device item for it, which is one of our custom user controls. We will see this in a few seconds. After it has created the custom user control instance with the given device, we can now register some sort of, hey, if you are clicked, I want to react with this over here. Then we can add this custom user control to our flow layout panels control list. Next, we are going to take a look at what happens if we actually click one of those user controls. At first, we are creating some sort of instant or at least converting it from the sender because the sender always tells, hey, I was the one raising the event. So this is our actual device item, Bluetooth device item. And in the next step, we can say like, hey, I know that this event was 100% raised from a Bluetooth device item. The sender object can't be null. So I'm saying with the bang operator, I think it's in English. Hey, don't worry, it can't be null. For sure, you could also do something like this. If there could be like a null, you can always check for it being null and then like returning and then you're also safe to go. After that, we are pulling the device information and we are displaying some sort of info from it, like 
the device name itself. At the end, when the form is closed, we are doing some sort of cleanup code. If any control of our flow layout panel is left, then we are cleaning up those handlers. I mean, it's not 100% necessary, but I think it feels kind of clean. This is why I'm doing so. At the end of this video, we are going to take one last look at our Bluetooth device item custom user control. This is basically what the custom user control looks like. It's a label over here with some setting set like I don't want this to be auto sized. I want an auto ellipsis which will create some dot 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 at the end if there's not enough space. In the next step I am creating some sort of other label which displays some more information. To be able to do so we passed the actual item inside of our custom user control. So let's press F7 to jump into the code and then we can see hey I have a backing field a property in this case which stores the actual device which got passed to the Bluetooth device item user control over here. And in the next step, we are displaying those infos like this. In the end, our final application looks like this. I'm going to start the app, press scan for Bluetooth devices. And now I need to wait a bit because depending on my filter criteria, it will take some time. After it has finished, we can now see our Bluetooth devices listed over here and here. So at the end of this video, thanks for watching. If it provided any value to you, please leave a like and a subscribe and I'll see you next time.